Hello, and welcome to the Givology Impact Series podcast. This week, we have Juanita Sinogo from the Circle of Peace School in Uganda. Circle of Peace School is located in Makindye, which is in Kampala, Uganda, East Africa. And it started in 1993. I am one of 13 kids. So one thing I want to say is education is one of the most important things that my parents valued. My father was able to be educated up to secondary school, which is high school. And my mother never really had enough education. She only had to fifth grade. So in her life, because she didn't have education as she would want to, and during that time, they only cared about educating men than they cared about educating women by the time when she was growing up. So what she said and she vowed to herself was, I will make the best I can to see that my kids all get educated. So they valued education in their lives. So they paid for us. We have 13 kids. They paid for our tuition and we are able to go to good schools. When I completed my education, I went to a teacher training college and I got my my teaching degree and I started teaching. As I was teaching in a primary school, a headmaster would come in the classroom with this long piece of paper and would call a student's name. Whenever they called your name, it meant you had not paid your school fees. You had to pack your bags and had to go home. So when the headmaster came to my class and did this, it broke my heart to see him send the kids back home and most of these kids he sent home were were really poor and some were totally orphans. They had no one to pay for their tuition. They lived with their grandparents and they really had nothing. So it broke my heart seeing that and I saw that there was a need and someone had to really pay attention to that need. What I did with my kids, my students in second grade, I could hide them in a closet or sometime I would send them to the bathroom and I snuck them back in class when the headmaster left doing his roll call and then we continued classes. So the teachers that was teaching with me found out my, that I was sneaking my kids back in class. So they warned me and they said, if we don't get paid, you are going to pay us. So I said, where will I get the money to pay this, these teachers? I had to go home and told my mom, that you say, my parents, that you say that education is the only key to open anyone's doors and a future, better future. I have kids in my class who are just out of class because they can't pay. They are poor and some are orphans. I want to help them. Can you support me? So my mom said, well, we don't have much, but what you can do, just teach them from the porch. So my mother gave us a porch on her house and said that this is where you can teach from. So we sat down on the porch. I started off with eight students on my parents' porch and started teaching them. By the end of that month, I quit my position at teaching and I started teaching these kids full time. By the end of that first month, it became 25 students. Then my father said, we have a problem. We have to find a place to put you guys you can't stay on this porch so went around on the village looking for place and then we found an area which had a house and it was abandoned by a widow who had moved away and went back to the village she said we thought we tracked we tracked where she was and asked her if she would let us use her house we would clean it up and start school in there so the lady said oh that what you are doing is a good thing you can have that property and you can give me just a little you can afford. I don't need much, but I'm glad you're helping these poor kids. So we started in that house. It was a one roof, two rooms in it. So that's where we started our teaching. My daddy gave us a table from my house, and then the people who had their students started bringing in whatever they had. Some brought in chairs, some brought in a mat. Everyone brought whatever they could afford to us, and they donated to the school to begin. So I sat down with and my sister also quit her job. She was working at a daycare. Her name is Mary Love and we both started teaching these students. So we sat down in a sack every morning when we used to when whenever the classes were going in going on because we never had enough furniture. We were sitting down on the floor. So as we sat in a circle, I thought in my head, what can I name this school? We need to name it. So because we are sitting in a circle, we said, well, 
these kids, they are at peace. You can see the peace in them. They are now worried about being chased away. And they're sitting in a circle. Why don't we call it Circle of Peace School? So it became Circle of Peace School from that on. And the school started growing and grew from each class like was building a next class. Uh, kids, parents, kids, and everyone started coming. And we were never sent away any child. We just had on more kids and more kids come. So the school grew from 8 to 25 to from 25 and it became big and in my mind, starting that school, I did not, I did not vision that where will I, I, like you can think in five years, this is what I want to do. And I thought as we were taking one day at a time, and the only thing that made that school survive was we had a desire, a determination to make a difference in these kids' lives and also to help them break the cycle of poverty. So that's why this we did everything we could do for these kids and the kids' school began to grow and grow and grow. Today the school has grown to 350 students and I'm really blessed to see that this school is now become international because people here in the U.S. have I have about 45 people who have gone to this school, visited the school. I have representatives from Givorje who have visited this school. So it's something that to be proud of. And it's not a just, like I don't even call it my school. It's, it's our school because it's now has been involved with so many people in it. There are so many people who are involved with helping us and trying to make a difference in the kids' life. And once you get to know these kids, you want to do the, the like you want to work hard with them and help them progress. How long has the school been around since you started on the porch with eight students? Okay, the school started in 1993 and it From 93 to today, the school is still going on. So that's almost 20 years? 20, yes. What are you most proud of today? What I'm most proud of today is to see the students that have grown out of the school and continued on their education, that they come back to give at the school by volunteering at the school. Like when I went with the Givorje representative, the students who are alums, I call them alumni, who, who went to that school, they came back and they saw us taking down the structure to move it to a, a permanent property because the other property where we started from, the owner wanted it back. So they came back, they came to help us and doing like, it was like, what can we do to help this school grow? What can we do to help this? Like whenever they know there is something going on, they come back. So I'm proud to see that, yes, the people that, the students that I'm trying to help, we are trying to help, they can also give back. I have two students who have graduated from law, uh, one has graduated from the, uh, from a law school who was in my first class. That was the one of the eight students. She is now like, if we have any problems or anything that involves le- legal issues, she says she's available to help us be our counselor. And I have a student who has come back now is teaching at the school. He's a is a art teacher so i'm i'm proud to see that the school is progressing and the kids are happy and to see that also there are more people involved because uh really learning being that people who go to the school from the u.s they learn a lot from these kids while they also the kids who are in in uganda are learning a lot from the people who go there so it, i'm proud to see that that's happening it's like a cross culture so I'm really proud of that. Mm-hmm. Wow. It's incredible. Yeah. I know that you've gone through this huge, long journey, and you've talked about many of the challenges you've had overcome. Is there anything else in particular that you like to say? Yeah. And if, in particular, what I would want to say is um, the school today is grown to 300 students, and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's from K through primary seven. Mm-hmm. The one thing that I really want to see, like I've set a strategic plan now being that, okay, the school has now been progressed. It's, uh, it's on a level where we want to try to 
to level up with the other schools. The standard is excellent. Students are working so hard. But mm-hmm. one thing we really the school that I see the school is lacking is we are lacking technology mm-hmm. because the world today is really geared onto the technology. It's so fast that everything is going so fast. The kids are lacking to have a computer, computers mm-hmm. that to learn those. It can be to to any to an American kid. It can it's something that a child like they grow up knowing what a computer is, what what they need to do with a computer. Mm-hmm. But the kids at the Sacolopi school, that's the one thing that's really hurting the school. And I want. And so bad to see that the school at least gets some computers that they can also start to learn the basics. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm trying to see that this school, and I'm writing my book and that book, when I get, like, when I sell the book, what I want to do is to build the school. I want to build the school to have better facilities because right now, yes, we do have, we have structure, but they are not, it's, they are not really good. So I'm hoping that uh, we have already the blueprints in, in place. We have everything, but the one thing we just need is the money to build the school. And uh, that's like my five-year plan that I'm saying that in five years, that school, I'll see it built. Mm-hmm. So um, I'm really looking forward to that. And uh, that's my main goal, to see that the school is built, having on a library, so that kids can go into a library, have on like a computer lab, that the students can go into the computer lab and they do what they need to do. So it's, and this school is not only just helping these kids, but it's also helping the community because in my, in, in my thinking, um, uh, is this school can also, if we grow it and have computers in the evening, we can turn that to be like an adult center where if in the evening parents who have their money can come and they study and they learn to to read and write those who don't know or they can also learn to they can learn English as a second language because there are some par- people in 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 Uganda who don't know English so they can come to that center in the evening and we have evening classes for those who can afford it. So that can also be a thing that can generate income for the school while uh, educating the community. But um, I'm putting all that in my strategic plan and I'm hoping that uh, all that, that can, in five years, it can all happen. Mm-hmm. So tell me more about this book that you mentioned. Okay, I'm writing my book and, uh, so far I have written, it's, it's, uh, it's like halfway done. I'm trying to find someone who can be like, um, I don't know if I should call them a ghostwriter or who can be my publisher. I don't know who I should call it. I want to reach out to Joyce when it's like, when I'm almost finished. Um, because I'm going to be mentioning a lot Givorogy in that book. But I want to reach out to her. She, being that she's in New York, she might know people that she can direct me who should help me. Or should I be my own publisher? I don't know how I can approach that. But I'm writing this book basically. It's, it's my life. But I'm not calling the book my life. I'm, I, I, I haven't given it yet a title. I had a title that I had named it. But I don't know if it was, that was what I'll stick to. But the book I'm writing, like my journey. Uh, mm-hmm. from, from my childhood, uh, leaving Uganda, how I left Uganda, then ending up here and where I am today. And all that will include in the school, Givorogy, all the people that I've met along the way on my journey to my, to here in, in the U.S. and the people that I've met. Because my life really, uh, Amy, it's been a journey. Mm-hmm. Because when I moved to the U.S., it's not like I came to look for an opportunity. It was like I was running away from my life being that I was like, you know, something called a woman persecution. Um, mm-hmm. I was running away for that. And I left something that I cared about deeply. That was one of the cared. I left two things, my family and the school that I cared about deeply. I left them behind. But I never lost sight of them. Whenever I could help them, I could, I tried my best. 
after I established myself, I opened my life to the world and told my friends about the school and called them to please come and join me and help this school. So my friends uh, all circled around me and they said that, yes, we will help you. Then I started the organization here called Circle of Peace International. And in, along that, those lines is where how I met Givoroje. And from that on, I've never gone, like I've never, it, it's just been constantly seeing more and more opportunities since I met Givoroje because uh, Givoroje has been really one of the big partnership that was has really helped these kids. Like first of the kids that the ones that were there before I even opened up Circle of Peace International, Givoroje was the first uh, partner that I partnered with to help the school, and they. Joy's advice means so many things, how I can make this better and how we can run the school. So I'm really proud to see that uh, I have people. And Givorges, really, um, their vision is not far from what the Circle Peace School vision is because they are trying to educate kids around the world. Uh, although I'm trying to educate kids in Uganda, but Givorges is educating kids around the world. So it really matched uh, it it matched us so well that's why i think the partnership worked so well so i'm really proud to be that i'm partnered with Givoroji and we i'm still working with them uh it's been just an honor to be to be know, to know you guys and to work with you and it's incredible to hear your own story as well and thank you for all the work that you're doing well, thank you. Is there any last message you want to leave with anyone who may be listening? Well, the last message that I want to leave with um, anyone who is listening to this, we are, Circle Peace International is um, an organization here in the U.S., and basically what it's doing is helping the Circle of Peace School progress. So I, um, we are looking for people to join our board in different things. We are looking for a program manager, I mean, yeah, program director, that one who will work with programs at the school with the U.S. people. And um, we are looking for student teachers, people who want to, to take a year off and want to go teach or who have three months and they go to the school and teach. Um, we are looking, all these are volunteers. We are looking, because they're non-paid positions, basically they are volunteers. If someone is looking for some, if they graduated and they have not found a job yet, we are looking for volunteers who can guard the school and teach. We are looking for people who can help us with fundraising here in the U.S. We are also looking for people who can handle the pen pal program that we have here in the U.S. We are also looking for uh, we are looking also for uh, a pen pal pro program manager who can work, a uh, director who can work with the students and the, here in the U.S. coordinate schools that want to do a pen pal program, connecting them with the school in Uganda. And also we are also looking also for um, someone who can handle our donors who have been sponsors to these students and uh, can be the person who can be like our link to the donors and and the students and say that this is your student and remind them that your donation is is due. We need more donations to 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 help to sponsor the child. So uh, we we have several positions still open, and and we are also looking for a videographer who can help us to edit videos that we have. Uh, someone who knows how to take good pictures. We are, we have several different things that are. Uh, uh, positions that are still available. We are looking for people. So I'm inviting anyone who is available, who has time to give, to join Circle of Peace International and help us to um, help uh, these kids really um, get their future, also have a better, bright future. Because what we all, no matter where you live, I know people who live in the U.S., you, we are all looking for one thing, Living in the U.S., living in China, living in Africa, living in Australia, living in wherever you are living, we are looking for one thing, a better life. 
That's what I am asking anyone who want to help these kids also have a better life. Come and join us and help Circle of Peace School in Uganda. Also get a better life and give these kids an opportunity, a gift of education. The other thing maybe I should say is we have 30 orphans that live at the school. 30 orphans live at the school full time and mm-hmm. uh, they live in the dormitory. So boys live in their dorm and the girls live in their dorm. So the this strategic plan that I'm talking about is we want to see that we build them a, a dormitory because they are living, uh, the boys are living on, they are all living in a bunk bed and they share it because we don't have enough room for each one to have their own bed. But I'm hoping that when we build the dormitories, we'll be able to build a building where each one will have their own bed and have also a cabinets in the in their room and also have like a study room where they can study and do their homework. So we mm-hmm. we don't have that because we we still are lacking we are lacking like the money to build. We have the space. That's one of the good things that Givoji helped me to do. We did a big fundraiser and they helped me to raise funds to buy purchase this land. So um but now I'm reaching out to Givoji to see if we can try to do a fundraiser to get uh the books uh to get them to build for them class classrooms and also the other thing that i'm looking for help is i am working with givorogia which is uh in alexandria students have collected books that we want to to send over to africa to the school i'm looking forward to see if someone is going to africa we know someone who who is in shipping business to let us know because we want to ship a lot of things we have collected over the years so we can send it over to the students and they can be able to use these books uh, to read and use them and than just keeping them and putting dust off those books. <laughs> Besides from helping with these campaigns and donating to these projects, how can someone get involved? Well, if someone wants to get involved to, to these campaigns, um, all they need to do is to just email me and then we can schedule up and see how we can arrange uh, arrange how to do it mm-hmm. all right a- anyone if anyone wants to join any of these campaigns or any, any anything or they if anyone even have an idea how can we fundraise or how can we do better how can we improve or mm-hmm. how can we do th- or if they know how to do something different that has worked for their organization they can reach out to me and email me uh, or just call me my number. You have my information, Amy. I think you can give that. I can give it to you. Um, they can just email me by jonidasenoga at gmail.com or they can call me my cell phone. I have it at all times, 804-247-1177. They can call me at any time or text me and then we can we can brainstorm how can we move move on or I can set up a Skype conference or we can do just a conference call and we see how we can we can really put that in place but i'm really open minded we are open minded to anyone who wants to get involved we are non picky and we have a give a circle peace international has sub committees and you can anyone can join any committee that they are comfortable with. Either they can join the communication or they, if someone is good with social media, they can join that committee that I am good with, with, with children. They, they can be that they are the people who are helping us with just sending these social media out there. So we need all that in place. Right now we don't, the people that I have on, on Circle Peace International, it's, it's sad to say, but they don't do Twitter and some don't do Facebook. So we are looking for the young blood people who are so much geared into that. So if I get that, I, I really think we want to put ourselves out there. Thank you. Thank you.